It is the night, and there is time for your quack. Quack, quack, It's the 90s and there is time for clacks. Also, this 1990 Atari game would have you believe. Designed by Mark Ankers and Mark Stephen Pierce, the object is to line up coloured blocks into rows of similar colours to make them disappear. This can be done by lining three blocks vertically, horizontally or diagonally. Of course, each round throws in some special requirement such as complete three diagonal combinations or survive 40 blocks falling. Atari Games originally released it as a coin-up follow-up to Tetris, about which they were tangled in a legal dispute at the time. Released in the summer of 1990, it is also known for being the last game to be released on the Atari 2600, before the console was discontinued in early 1992. So there are many ports of Kallax across many different systems, with the console ports being the better ones, so we'll leave them to last. Let's start off with the Amiga port, featuring a really cool intro tune by Matt Furness. Now with the arcade looking so basic, I'd expect the Amiga port to look just as nice. However, as you can see, it doesn't really get there in the looks. That's okay though. As far as ports go, this one is pretty good, however the playability is nothing like the arcade version. The arcade feels much snappier, while this Amiga version feels like you're playing on ice. It's also a lot tougher than the arcade version right from the get go. This makes the game quite challenging to new players. Still, at least it sounds good and plays reasonably well. Maybe worth a try if you own an Amiga. This is the Atari ST port and as you can see, it is identical to the Amiga game. Same slippery controls, same boosted difficulty and what seems to be the same graphic quality too. The only thing different is the audio. While the chip tunes are nice on the ST, I do miss the cool speech and higher level of audio found on the Amiga game.
Next up is the MS-DOS version, which can be displayed in EGA, CGA, VGA and Tandy modes. We are taking a look at the VGA mode. Now while this version may look and sound a little worse than the ST and Amiga, it actually plays far better. The controls are tight and feel precise, just like the arcade game. It also has more balanced difficulty settings. Unfortunately my copy is a little glitchy on the orange blocks. Clax even made its way onto the BBC Micro. This version was programmed by a Mr. Blake. To overcome the limitations of the BBC Micro's color palette, this version uses different designs on the falling blocks to make them easier to distinguish. Sadly, this doesn't help the game much. First of all, the blocks fall off the edge too quickly. It's as if there's a step of animation missing. The controls are also sluggish. Getting the blocks off your paddle is a right pain. You just can't get them off fast enough at times. This makes for some frustrating gameplay when things get heated. Also, this port lacks any variety in the background. We've just got the one it would seem. Onto the more popular 8-bit home micros from the West, starting with the Commodore 64 port. Now you may have thought that the BBC Micro version was slow, judging by the footage. Well, this Commodore 64 version puts that to shame, with its extremely leisurely pace. I'd like to call this the beginner's version, but I can't. Why, you may ask? Well, simply because the controls are rubbish. I mean... How can you mess up such simple controls? All we need to do is move left and right, but no, that must be a difficult thing to program. The Amiga and ST feel like you're playing on ice, while this version is twitchy as hell. At first, I thought it was because I was using a joystick, so I moved over to the keyboard controls, yet the twitchiness continued. You can even see from this footage that I'm having a hard time lining up where I want my paddle to be. Wave. After the pretty shoddy Commodore 64 port, I wasn't expecting the ZX Spectrum version to be any good. But do you know what? It is actually a very playable version of Kallax. Yes, it looks basic and slows down when things get busy, but it plays well. It even has a little bit of speech in there. Thank you. 
Oh my god, the world has ended. The Amstrad CPC actually has the best version of a game out of the main three Western 8-bit home micros. Yes, it's true. Just look at how beautiful this looks. It plays really well too. Who would have expected this? Okay, time to move on to the Japanese systems and consoles, starting with the PC Engine. Man, this is a good start for the consoles. I'd even go as far as saying this PC Engine port looks better than the original arcade. The use of colour is well done. We also get the arcade speech and similar sound. Plays well too. Overall, a very good port. Okay, so the Mega Drive actually has two versions of Kallax. First, let's look at the Western version that was developed by MSP and DSA for Tengen. The same developers behind the PC Engine port. Sadly, this doesn't feature as much speech as the PC Engine version, but it does have some interesting options. First of all, there are new backgrounds for the first two waves. There's also a choice of tile colors. There's a widescreen mode which is actually still in 4x3 ratio but just stretches the playing field a little. And there's also music during gameplay, but it's pretty awful so it's best to leave that off. But what's not awful is the cool perspective shift on the paddle as it moves left and right. Very nice. So yeah, a pretty good port. <laughs> And onto the Japanese Mega Drive port, which was developed by Namco. Sadly, this port is missing the custom options found in the Western release, but it does make up for it in other ways. There is now more speech, which is all original. The graphics for the blocks are better, and there are a few original backgrounds. It also plays well. The main selling point is that this version has a two-player versus mode. It's nothing too fancy. Basically, the first person to complete the requested task or survive the longest is the winner. Still, a nice addition that no other port so far has had. Oh no!
Next up is the Atari Lynx version, which is played in vertical orientation. I really like the intro presentation on this one. It's quite cool how they show sign language for each letter, followed by the strange Kallax hand gesture. This port is really well done, featuring arcade speech, tight controls, and a nice difficulty curve. Being an MSX owner in Europe must have been heartbreaking because all you ever got were shitty ZX Spectrum ports which were pretty shitty for the most part to start off with. Well, in Japan, they were getting games that really made use of the MSX hardware. Anyway, this is a slow basic port of the ZX Spectrum game with only one background. The original release of Kallax on the Famicom was handled by Hudson, although the exact same version was released in the US by Tengen. This port features some unique music and sound effects, probably made to make it more edgy to fit in with the 90s rave culture. Sadly, you can't have sound effects and music at the same time. What is this, an Amiga game? As far as ports go, it's reasonable. Plays well, but doesn't look too pretty. Next up, we've got Chocolate Cake Simulator for the Game Boy. In this amazing game, you must stop various Battenberg cakes from falling off the factory conveyor belt. Failure to do so will result in a mouse infestation, causing you to close down your factory. Japanese home computer time with the NEC PC8801 port. What can I say about this one? Well, it is very pretty looking and plays a good game of Kallax. It's just a shame the sound is rather weak. Apparently, there is also a PC9801 port, but I don't have that one.
Kalaxo on the Master System is based upon the Western Mega Drive version. It even has a similar set of options, and yes, the music option still sucks. Compared to its main rival, the Famicom port, this looks quite nice. It plays well too, but the sound effects are rather lacking. Clacks on the move with the Game Gear version. This is basically the Master System version cropped onto a Game Gear screen. That's it, nothing extra or less. Kalax has the honour of being the last officially made Atari 2600 game to be released. Coming out in 1990, it's hard to believe this was actually a thing. As you can see, it's very similar in looks to the Game Boy version. It plays like it too. It's Kalax in the most basic sense. There was an Atari 7800 prototype made, however that version was never released. And here we go, ending with the Game Boy Color version. That was released after the 90s, unlike all the other ports. So this is like the baby of the ports. It's a reasonably well made port, but it does get a little tricky a little too soon at times. And let's take a look at all those versions of Clax running side by side. It is the night, and there is time for Clax. Clax. 